Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. there hello self audience i'm so glad to have you here today and you're going to be very glad too this is the hello self podcast it's a place where you will receive strategies and insights to find your purpose and passion in life and you'll get these insights through stories that my guest will be sharing and have i got a treat for you today I'm Hello Self podcast host, Patricia Leonard. I'm a speaker, an author, a coach, and now a podcaster. And I just, I'm so glad that you're here because I think that if you're looking for what makes you happy in life, then I think that the guest that you're going to hear from today can give you some advice. She's got great background as a coach and many other things that I'm going to let her share after we get this started. But first of all, I'd like to say that I've been fighting this cold and my guest just told me her cough went on for almost five months. Oh dear, that is tough. I don't want to hear that. But I want to tell you what I did to get ready for the podcast today. And It's another insight and strategy that I think will benefit you. I'd like to tell you that the things that I believe in that may be sound crazy, but I believe that there are uh, strategies, insights, gifts around us all the time. And I want to share one that happened with me this morning. I told you already that I'm fighting this. I don't want to say fighting. I'm working on us partner getting rid of each other on this cold and my body. So I went to get a tea bag and I thought a cup of tea will help me with my throat. And it was called Vanilla Spice Perfect Energy. And it says it helps with your focus and gives you energy. And I really needed that today too. But the thing that stood out for me was the little tag on the end of the tea bag. And I was sharing this with my guest. Say hello to Esther Bailey Bass, and then I'll tell you more about her. Hey, Patricia. Hello, welcome. Yes. Thank you. Good to be here. Yes. (laughs) She was giving me a lot of advice, too, because she's gone through this. But here's the little tag on the tea bag. Here's what it said. Relate to your greatness and not to your weakness. Now, isn't that a great piece of advice? And you see, it just came on a tea bag tag. So I believe that there's gifts around helping guide us all the time. And we just have to pay attention. Esther and I just did a mindfulness exercise just to get some focus before we started this podcast. That's part of her coaching experience too. So once we get out of the craziness of life, we can start to see that there are many things helping guide us. So if you're looking for your passion and purpose, First of all, we're glad you're here because you're going to get some insights today. And secondly, just look around you. There are little insights all the time. And the reason I like to have guests on my show and listen to their story is that I believe in every story, yours too, there are many gifts and lots of glories. So Esther is going to share some of her insights. But first, I'd like to introduce you to Esther from her bio. So I'll just highlight a few insights that stood out for me. And then we're going to let Esther take it from here. So Esther Bailey Bass is a certified professional coach, speaker, 
author, and trained circle practitioner. She teaches her clients to listen to themselves. And that is basically what these stories are. What do you hear yourself saying and relating to when Esther tells her story? Because there will be some messages in that for you. So she helps her clients listen to themselves and their personal values. What are your personal values? What's important to you? And honor who they really are. That's what Hello Self is about. Honoring who you are and finding the gifts in being who you are and the personal values and the talents you have. <coughs> Excuse me. That's the way it's going to be today. Her, pro her emphasis is on the importance and impact of personal relationships. Nothing more important than personal relationships as a leadership resource. Collaboration, because she speaks to leaders and helps them get clear about who they are. So personal leadership, relation, co collaboration, and community building, those are the impacts that she helps our leaders gain. She has experience in nonprofit, corporate, entrepreneurship, and we're going to find out more about that as she tells her story. But one final thing that really helped me, even though, and I've known Esther for a number of years, we were in International Coaches Federation program or organization here in Nashville, Tennessee for a number of years. But it just goes to show you, you may think you know somebody, but you don't really. Just you may think you know yourself, but you don't. That's why coaches help us. But here is one thing that I really like that she had on her bio, and I'd like to share that because her focus is leadership. She says, leadership is an inside job. Isn't that interesting? It is not enough to have a skill set. We can go to all the schools, we can go to all the programs, but real leadership starts within. There is a process for growth and the journey of leadership, and it starts with self-discovery. How fitting for Hello Self. So now I'm going to turn it over to Esther. So enjoy and listen to what she has to say because she has over 20 years of experience in this business helping leaders at all levels in our society and all industries. Esther, here we go. It's your turn. Tell us about your journey, life, and career. Oh, wow. And maybe some hello self moments. <laughs> I honestly can't remember it all, but my body remembers everything that I've experienced, right? One of the things I'm becoming more and more aware of is the body does keep score. And I began coaching before I knew it was coaching. And I've heard other coaches say that. So I've always been a champion for the underdog, the overlooked, and the underserved. And I started this when I was probably 14, a wild and precocious mm -hmm. young teenager, adventurous and curious about the world and very independent and confident in my own skin, wearing my own shoes. And I've often rebelled against the status quo and in some cases, authority. But I started coaching before I knew that's what that was a thing, even. <clears throat> but what really landed me squarely in this work was one day I was just sitting at my cubicle and just started to ponder what do I want to do? And is this the thing I want to do for the rest of my life? And the answer was no, clearly no. <laughs> and so I began 
my adventure and exploration by asking myself just some really simple questions. What was it that I once liked to do? And I came up with those things and thought, I'm going to explore those again to see if there's any aliveness there for me, if that's any, if it's relevant for where I want to go from this point. And I did that exploration. And I also asked family and friends, how did they see me? Getting other perspectives for how other people saw me, people who were close to me or worked with me. And I got some interesting answers. And the one answer that really stood out was, you're a teacher. I thought, no. And I'm thinking teacher in the traditional sense. But it was the thing that really kept, it kept nudging at me and pinching me and poking at me. And I was just like, I don't want to be a teacher. I don't want to do that. And, but again, I just had one dimensional thinking about that. When I got curious is when coaching came up. And then I started to hear conversations around coaching. And there were other people who were considering becoming a coach. And I'm like, what is it? And how does one go about becoming a coach? And so I thought, okay, I need to know what this is. And this was about This was probably in late 2011, early 2012. And I just kept pondering and playing and exploring and things like that. And finally I said, you know what? If I'm gonna do this, I need to get serious. And so right around spring is when I started looking for the spring of 2012, looking for some coaching training And I came upon a school, a coach training school that really resonated with me, their mission, their values. It just hit all the boxes. It just pinged everywhere. And then I thought, I don't want to land on the first thing. Let me see what else is out there. And I kept coming back to this first choice. And I was like, okay, this must be it. And again, to your point, Patricia, looking for the gifts, looking for the insights and the wisdom that is the signs that are right in front of us. I think there's a commercial out right now that kind of talks about that. But uh, that's when I began my journey. And I started coach training in the fall, winter of 2012. And I've been coaching ever since. And I absolutely enjoy building the relationship between myself and a client. So did it feel natural when you started that? Did it just feel natural? It did. I gained some skills. I understood a little bit more. The thing is that everyone has their own answers, right? And so the skills that are necessary to help individuals mine for their own answers. Mm -hmm. So I, in my mind, the way I see it, when I was a little girl, I lived for a short period of time in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And on one fall, winter day, I was at a creek. And there was another little girl at a creek. And she was at one end, I was at the other end. And the water was cold, but we were looking for shells. She was looking for shells, I was looking for shells. We didn't know each other, had never seen each other. Eventually we made our way to each other. And we were looking for shells and rocks together. And that vision stays in my mind because that's how I relate to coaching Mm. is that when I'm in relationship with a client, they're in relationship with me. And then we have the arc of the coaching relationship that we're in this thing together and we're mining and looking for the client's truths. And we do that from a place of authenticity and deep curiosity. Mm. And that's, why I enjoy coaching and why it feels so natural to me. Yeah, that's how I came to coaching and I absolutely enjoy it. That's a very interesting story. And I love it that a lot of times I hear people say, it went back to this moment and it was the shell finding 
moment that really it was another trajectory, if you will, in the direction of your coaching. And we may not have known it at the time. Mm -hmm. You may not have known because you were just a young girl. And I was 10. <laughs> I was 10, 10 years old. old. Yeah. And I think if we look, I, I like what you say about ask yourself, and you brought out three or four key points that I really like a lot, is ask yourself, what do you really want to do? Who are you? And then you ask other people. And I thought that was another way for gathering, because sometimes people don't know who they are. They say, I don't know who I am, but this is another way. Just see what the answers are that come and ask somebody else. So I really like that a lot. And mm -hmm. I like the point that you brought out. Things just kept nudging at you toward coaching, even though you didn't even know what it was and teaching it, it kept nudging you. And I think that's another great insight for people. What keeps nudging you or what keeps coming up in your life? You may have a corporate job or you may be running your own business or you may be in life transition and you don't know what you want to do. But what keeps nudging you? It was interesting, Esther, I was at an event Sunday and I asked this, okay, this woman is representing a chemist that makes fragrances for celebrities. And he happened to be promoting a new one called Judy, which is for Judy Garland. But I asked her, because she was with him, and I said, what do you do? And she's a young lady. Just made me feel like, because she's in an exploration. And mm -hmm. I said, what do you do? And she said, I'm a project manager for Vince, this chemist. And I said, is that what you want to do? Mm -hmm. She said, it makes money. And this is where we get caught a lot of times, isn't it, Esther? Yeah. That, yeah. that little carrot of dollars. And yeah. so I asked her what she really wanted to do. And she said, sing. It just came out. It just came out. So we do know, don't we, Esther? We absolutely do know. And the hurdle is we know that money is the currency, right? And it's, and so we immediately go to how do I survive? If this is the thing I love and money is the currency, then how do I survive? How do I do what I love and keep a roof over my head and food on my table and all those things, those survival things that need to be met? Yet, we forget that it's not a starting from zero. We're starting from experience. And so for me, the big thing is, one of the big things, because there are many big things, is learning lessons. Learning lessons. We go through an experience, positive, negative, good or bad, whatever label we put to it. And upon reflection, do we pick up the lesson? What is it that is here for me to pick up and carry forward. So if she wants to sing, then sing. Allow that part of herself to be and to come forward and express itself in the world. And then you can discover ways on which to find that, that money currency to support mm -hmm. and sustain. And a lot of times I'll talk to my clients and say, Maybe you have to do a job while you're exploring your dream. And so it may be, and one woman told me, she said, I didn't want to do this, but I decided I'm going to take an at-home data entry job. And she said, and my friend said, that you're much more talented than that. Why are you doing that? She said, because I want to live my dream. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you you just hit the nail on the head when you said a while ago, get serious and curious. Get serious and curious. Yes, I picked that up as what you said. And that's, we have to look at what's interesting. I have a young man that I coached. Actually, I met him in 2015. And he's out in Sioux Falls. Now, this is how big a commitment he just made. 
Okay, he's got a book out and he had a podcast for a while. But here's what he said. He said, the money was controlling me. He was working in corporate America, had a really good job. And he said, the money is controlling me. And I told my wife one day, and he's got children. He said, I can't do it anymore. I just can't. She said, then quit. So that's exactly what he did. And it's funny because once he did that declaration, things started opening up, possibilities. It's our perception, isn't it, Esther? Oh, yes, absolutely. How a limited perspective or perception Mm -hmm. can keep us stuck, Mm -hmm. playing small, not living out our dreams. Yes. And that's why... We cannot, I'm really big on community and relationships. And so we cannot do the growing we need to do in a silo there and by ourselves. We need to do that in community. We need to heal in community. And that's not saying that we don't need time to ourselves and by ourselves. We absolutely do. But at the same time, we have to have life experience to help sharpen the song. You're so right. And you know what? Another thing is, because I'm about celebration, and the more we celebrate, the more we give others, or the more we explore out, the more we give others the freedom to say, maybe she can do that. Maybe I can do that if she can do that. So we give them courage simply by our own courage. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? I do agree. I absolutely do agree. That by my doing, I, by, uh, I give someone else permission to do as well. By example, it it goes both ways. You know, whatever the thing is, by someone doing X, I give another one permission to do Y. It's just how that works. Yes. We, this is how being human is modeled <coughs> to, we model our humanity to one another, whatever that looks like, whatever side of the pendulum you might be on, it is a modeling for how to be human. Yes. And you know what? There is nothing wrong with trying something and then deciding, no, I don't think that's for me. It's not failure. It's back to your curiosity and exploration. Yeah, yeah. And that, oh, it's not for me. Again, it's a learning. You learn something. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I learned that that's not for me. Check, done, move on to the next. Yes. And that is a good way to say, I've always been curious about this, but Go talk to someone. Let's say that you want to start your own business. Go talk to somebody that's running their business. Or if you want to be a coach, go talk to Esther. We're going to give you her information at the end of this podcast. (laughs) But talk to somebody that's coaching Mm -hmm. and see what they say. How did you get started? I coached a small team when I was a little girl, and I just found out that people liked it and they got better themselves and I didn't even know I was a co yeah so I think a lot of times we don't look at what we have do we Esther we don't we often do not we look outside yeah we do there's a story if you don't mind I'd like to share oh no please this is for our uh, listeners it was a beautiful May 1st day I believe it was 2017. So what is that? Almost six years ago? I'm not good with math. So you, whatever you tell me, I'll believe. <laughs> six, seven years ago, I was headed to work and it was a beautiful day. I was early and I thought I was going to get to work early. And so I leave my house. I go out the garage door. I get in the car. I start the car. I open up the garage door, I pull out, and just as I'm about to pull off, I close the garage door, and I look back to only see the garage door is still open. I go, I I thought I I pushed the button. Let me try again. So I tried again, and 
the same thing happened. I could see it would go nearly all the way down and then it would come up. I don't understand. What, is it the wind? Because it was a windy day. I'm like, I don't understand why it's doing that. Okay, so I back up, I put the car in park. I grab the hand remote from the visor. I go into the garage and I try it again. And I push the hand remote, the garage door goes down and then it goes back up. And I'm like, okay, I'm, now I'm losing time. I'm like, I'm trying to get to work. And I thought I was going to be there early. It's May 1st, which is my birthday month. And so I said, okay, let me try the wall unit. Maybe it's the, oh, yeah. the hand unit. Let wow. me try the wall unit. So I go to the wall unit and push it and it goes down. And it stays down this time. And I'm like, okay, now how do I get out? My car is on the other side. So I'm like, okay, my husband told me, he said, if you pull the red string, you'll be able to lift the garage door manually and put it down manually. So I said, okay, that's what I'll do. So I pull the red string and I go to lift the garage door manually but it wouldn't budge. I've seen this done before. Like we just seen it. And I'm like, I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> now, mind you, my car is on the other side of the garage door. The door is slightly open. The key is in the ignition. The car <laughs> is running. My purse is on the seat. My phone is in my purse. And panic is hitting in. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, I'm locked in here. Like panic set in. Mm -hmm. like, not believe. Like I went twirling in that garage like a squirrel. How do I get out of here? So I tried the entry door from the garage into the house. It's locked because I locked it. Oh my goodness. And I'm thinking, I don't know how I'm going to get out of here. So we put a cordless phone in the garage, but my beloved decided to unplug it. So now it needs to be charged. Do you know how long it takes for us, a, a cordless phone to be charged? It said 18 hours. I knew I wasn't going to be in there 18 hours. Like... I just oh. need a quick charge so I can call somebody. Exactly. <laughs> so all the while I'm screaming at the top of my, I could hear my neighbors going in and out their doors. I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, like, help. Nobody heard me. I could hear cars going by. I could hear the wind tussling. I could hear the mailman come. You know, and I'm like, I'm in the garage. Can someone help me? No one could help me. I sat there and I looked at the garage. I was like, I don't know what's happened. I don't know how you work. So in, in my body, I felt exhausted by this time, all the screaming, all the trying to figure out how to get out. I just feel exhaustion in my body. And then I heard resign. What? I heard resign. And I'm thinking, who said that? Where'd that come from? And so as I'm feeling this tiredness in my body, I sat down and I sat down in front of the garage door. And I looked at the garage door and I said, I don't know how you work. Now, all the while, I still have the hand remote in my hand. And so I'm sitting there in front of the garage door and I'm thinking, how do you work? And then I heard, what did you do? I said, oh, well, I did this. I pulled the string. And then it said, but then what happened? This is what happened. Okay, so what is this? So if I did that, then what if I do this? I said, oh. And then I heard, you can do it. I heard you can do it. And I knew that voice. That was my 10-year-old self. My 10-year-old self has always championed for me. My 10-year-old self believes in me when no one else believes in me. She said, you can do it. 
And so I stood up on the ladder I was sitting on and I connected the two arms that pull the pulley for the motor on the garage door and connected the two back together. And then I pressed the hand remote garage door. Open. <laughs> and all of a sudden the garage door went up and it was like watching a chorus sing. The sky was blue, the sun was shining, all of that. And that's how I got out of the garage door. But I often look back over there. Oh my gosh, so many lessons there, Patricia. So many lessons. The internal listening to myself, my body said, you're tired. Sit down, stop. Get curious. A familiar voice to me came to me to remind me what I was capable of. I reverse engineered what I did. So many lessons came forward. Because when I heard resign, I was like, resign for what? My job? I hadn't even got there yet. I'm trying to get to work. <laughs> but it was resign from exhaustion, resign from struggle. Resign, sit down because you're tired. Yes. And once I could sit down, I could get still yes. and I could get quiet and I could get curious. And curiosity became my ally. And then once curiosity was on board, my 10 year old self, my champion, my, my chairman of my board, if you will, began to speak to me. And then I listened. And I carry that story with me all the time. Because there were so, so, so many lessons. That 10-year-old self said, I want to come out and play. I want to experience more sunlight. I want you to hear me. I want freedom. Yeah. Because I'm here to support you. I'm here to serve on your behalf. And when I speak about, this is what I mean when I talk to my clients about getting them to listen to their inner leader, because it's there. It's already formulated. Yes. And it's there. Mine for me was my 10 year old self. For someone else, it might be their 14 year old self or some other pivotal point in their life that they can go to that this is when I was my most brilliant self. You know, this, I am so glad you shared that story because that is, that's how my podcast came about is I kept asking, what is it my next, what am I supposed to be doing? And I do believe in these things that we know, but we don't know that we know. And we allow society and the things that we have been conditioned to believe to rule our lives. And we don't listen. We listen to all that and not to our internal self. But I remember I kept asking, what is my next thing? What am I supposed to do? What's my real purpose? And I was awakened one morning, just like you said, this loud voice, and it was very impatient. Patricia, just use hello self. And it was like, I've told you 50 times and you don't listen. That's what the voice sounded like to me. I had no idea what hello self meant, but I went in to have breakfast and just got a piece of paper and started writing hello self. And then it became a book that I've got out now. And then it became this podcast. But it's been my whole coaching and speaking platform. Because it's just like you said, when we find ourselves that we don't know what else to do, we will pay attention to ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the first place. You even said it. That's the first place to start. But we don't trust ourselves enough. I don't know if it's trust, 
but we just don't know what we know. And I, yeah, I wrote a book last year called The Listening and the Knowing, and that is exactly what it's about. When we can start to listen and know that we know by that listening, yes. And you knew what that meant to you and you, and now you share it with others, leaders, do yeah. you? Yeah, I do, I do. It's that intuitive listening, mm -hmm. that intuitive hit. And the thing of it is, again, sharing that story again brings me so much joy. And yet that intuitive listening, to not be attached to it when I share, to not mm. be attached to it with the client, because that may not be the thing that resonates mm. with them. That might not be the thing that gets them with moving them forward. And that's always the intention is to get them moving forward because coaching is a really nice conversation, but it has to have some action. Yes. You know? Yes. So the end goal is to have my clients make forward movement. Yes. And so maybe it's not that, but it's something else. So anytime my intuition is speaking to me, I'm obligated to share without being attached to it. Yes, because your inner self knows more than what your mental self knows about exactly. what coach. Yes, what coach exactly. really is. And so then to share that and allow the client to find the resonance within what I'm sharing, if it's there for them. If it's not, that's okay. Exactly. But at least it's out there. And I love what you're saying that, and you shared this at the most appropriate time in our conversation today, because you talked about all the realities of life that we think a coach should be and the thing and your life experiences but then you came back with this story that was really an inner look and an inner knowing of, yes, this is my next step. And I love that that the timing of the story was so perfect. <coughs> it was so perfect. Excuse me, everybody, I'm fighting with this. If someone in our audience, and I told you I might ask this, but I think maybe now, is aspiring to be a life or career coach, what advice would you give them? Read and practice. Fail fast. Mentor someone. Oh my gosh. Fulfill The level of fulfillment that I get from mentoring someone, because I had this asked of me, I did a lot of networking and someone that I networked with, we ran in the same circles. She uh -huh. reached out to me and she said, Esther, I have this young lady. She's in college and she's wanting to do an internship. She doesn't know where to start. And because you're in radio, do you mind talking to her? Absolutely not. I would welcome it. Please have her call me. And so I talked to her and she shared with me where she was in her studies. And um, I gave her some ideas. We brainstormed some ideas on what she could do for an internship. And she, we hung up the phone and she went on about her business. I promise you within a year's time, she called me. I was quite shocked. Like she remembered me and she called me and she called to say, I just want to call and tell you, thank you, because everything you shared with me, I followed through on. And I want to let you know that I got an internship at a TV station. Oh, and she was just so excited. And I'm like, I didn't, I didn't do anything. Honestly, she did all the work. She did the heavy lifting. We worked through it together. We talked through it together, but her coming back to share to acknowledge me in any way whatsoever as having been instrumental in her journey just lit me up. Sometimes, you know? Esther, that's what coaching is about. It's just a nudge to get across the finish line or to get across the next step in the activity. And you're right. It is a relationship between the coach coming up with ideas and helping the nudging and the person taking action. Yeah. Yes. Coaching is about taking action. Yes. It's about self-discovery. Yes. 
through the self-discovery that we do take action. That's exactly right. And we begin to love ourselves and celebrate ourselves through exactly. taking action. Oh my gosh, I, I reached that goal and I never dreamed I would. You got yeah. out of the garage and you never, <laughs> you thought you were going to be there the rest of your life. And you know what? Getting out of the garage was another deposit into my self-love bucket. Yes. And it's those kind of things that when we can be in service to ourselves, because sometimes that's right. We got to be in service to ourselves. That's a deposit into our self-love bucket. We yes. think that all the time it's doing out there for those and for others, but you got to come back home. You have to fill your own cup. Yes. Just like the little tea bag today said late to your greatness and not your weakness. Yeah, just exactly. Yeah, great wrap up there yeah. with that statement. Yes. So I would encourage anyone who's interested, it doesn't have to be coaching, but whatever the interest is, whatever the nudge is, whatever is pulling you forward to begin serving in that way. That service might start with your own individual self. Yes. It might start with someone else. Begin to fill your bank of knowledge your knowledge base by reading. Let allow reading, self-discovery, conversations, services and support to others to be where you start. Going for long walks, I say to myself, so many insights come. Oh, yes. Being Anything. out in nature. Yeah. Cause we often think, oh, if I want to do a thing, I guess I need to go to take a class. That's I, right. I need to go get a degree. I need to go get a certification. And everything we need, we already have. Oh my gosh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So believe that. You yeah. said you had a television a radio show. How can people I used to work in I used to work in radio. So I worked for public radio for a long time, for 18 years. So Do you still I have it? I do, no, I don't oh, have okay. a show. I never did have a show. Oh, I used okay. to just work at public radio. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because just your diverse background tells people that if you're curious, just go out there and explore that. You never know. People will give you chances that you never thought you could get. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And just being authentic. And one's own authentic self will shift as you evolve. Mm. No, you're not like an egg is authentically an egg. You can't be anything else. But as humans, we're always evolving. Yes. We're always changing. We're always shifting. We're always transforming. So your authentic self will shift and change and transform as you evolve as well. Esther, I believe in that so much. I remember when I was in college, I had to do a speech. And I've told this on the podcast before. They're going to get tired of it. But I remember we had to do a speech and we had to say it was about who we are. Mm -hmm. And at the end of my speech, I said, OK, I just told you today who I know myself to be. But let me say that if you ask me to come back tomorrow and reintroduce myself, it will be different because every day we are evolving. And I can't believe you said that because that is exactly how mm -hmm. I feel. And that's why we need to pay attention every day, look in the mirror and say, who are you today? What are you grateful for? Who are you going to touch today with your love and your guidance? Just uh, ask yourself some questions. Yes. Oh, Esther, this has been, are there any other, let me see if I had anything else. I think we've covered everything that I wanted to talk about. Is there anything else as we begin to close? First of all, thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been, first of all, I've gained a lot myself. So I hope you have audience. I hope you paid attention, but you can replay it. That's okay. But thank you so much for agreeing to be on the podcast and share your life and your understanding with our listeners, because that's what we are, is we reach out to help others grow in the direction they want to go and see themselves through a different 
screen, a different vision of who they think they can be. So are there any things? First of all, I want to make sure that you let us know how you can be reached and if you're still looking for coaching or if you still engage with clients. But um, then just some things as you close out, what is it you would like to say to our audience as a seasoned coach, as a woman who lives her life fully, as a woman who helps others, like the young college student, what is it you, how would you like to just wrap this up and then give us your website and things like that? And besides, to the audience, we will have our website on the podcast too. Yeah, I would just say to the audience and those that are listening to You've heard this before, but believe in yourself. It's a lot to take in. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things to put everywhere your eyes turn. I believe in myself. On your bathroom mirror, on your refrigerator, on your water bottle, your steering wheel in your car. Just continue to meditate on the I believe in myself. I believe that is powerful because I don't believe we reflect on the belief in self enough. Me getting out of the garage is an example of believing in myself. When we do difficult, hard, challenging things and we can accomplish what we set out to do, that's belief in self. That's not about being egoic, no, narcissistic, or any of those things. But believing in yourself and giving yourself the space, the room to spread out, to have impact, to have a voice, to share is an act of love, honestly. Yes. For yourself and for others. So I would probably say that, and it's hard. It's hard to translate that. Believe in self. I believe in myself. And you have to say it often enough that it becomes real. And look for those moments. Yeah, and look for those moments. You said, Patricia, you surprised me after... I didn't know you could do that. So compliment yourself. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) Remember what it took for you to be able to achieve and accomplish. Yes. Reflect reflect on those achievements. Oftentimes we do things and it becomes yesterday's news for us. And it's no, bring that stuff forward. Again, what is the lesson here that I can pick up and carry with me? Look for the lessons. Believe in self. Look for the lessons Mm -hmm. and move them forward. Amen. Amen. Because your lived example is important. Yes. And in the day and age that we're in, when so much is coming at us to the contrary, I think it's very important that we, just like you said, that we first believe in ourselves and we don't get caught up in what everybody else or what society is telling us and that we move forward in our own individual knowing and gifts, talents and gifts that we can give to others in their moving forward. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. And for my leaders, I would just say for those that are in the position of leadership, the title of leadership, it really is about your authentic self and how you're leading your people by example. A lot of times leader leadership is a concept, but leadership is really about one's humanity and how we show up in the world. And yes. so leading from self, we can't lead others until we learn and understand how to lead ourselves. Oh. Leadership is not performative. And it is not a title. It is not a title a title it's not performative and so that's what I would say when I talk about going deep introspection it is about learning who you are as a leader and how you do that Patricia you may make cornbread I know I make cornbread but we make it differently yes oh I do and I love cornbread (laughs) (laughs) so 
it's that kind of thing that I'm talking about is how you do what you do is authentic to you and how I do what I do is authentic to me. Yes. And so for leaders out there with a title or in the leadership space, that authenticity for how you lead, the example that you're leaving behind, the invitation that you're giving to others for the vision you hold, be mindful of that and lead from self first. One of the challenges that I would give our audience, based upon what you're just talking about, one of the <laughs> challenges that I would give them is when you're out someplace and somebody says, who are you? Give them your name and then something about you without using a title. I'm a mom. I'm a dad. I'm a director. I'm a we get so caught up in saying those things that we don't know how to say who we are. So I challenge you to sit down, audience, all of my listeners and Esther's listeners, sit down and write something about who am I without the titles that was. Yes, that's just exactly what you're talking about, isn't it, Esther? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Let go of the labels. Okay. Yeah, the labels. Get to the naked truth. <laughs> yes, undress that story and create the right one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, how can we get a hold of you if we, if our so, audience would want to link up? Yeah. So, ebbinflowcoaching.com or estherbaileybass.com. Either one of those will get you to my website where we can connect. And you can always find me on social, Esther Bailey Bass or Ebb and Flow Coaching. And that's Ebb in the letter in Flow Coaching. You can find me that way on social or via my website, estherbaileybass.com. Thank you so much. I am I have enjoyed this so much. And I know that our audience has picked up a lot of great things about stay curious, be authentic, Ask yourself, who are you? So she gave us some great things to get us started in knowing more about, hello, self. Who am I? Hello, self. And if we ask ourselves that question and we follow some of the advice that Esther gave us, I'm sure you're going to come up with some new insights about who you are and maybe the direction you want to go next. So thank you so much for being here, Esther. And Absolutely. thank you, audience, for tuning in. And I'll see you. This is Patricia Leonard, your host, signing off from Hello Self. And I'll see you in the next podcast show. And remember this, keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today, and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe, and remember this, keep dreaming.